Welcome to this video tutorial with Virtual Racing School in the Porsche 911 GT3 Cup on iRacing. This week takes us to Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca where as ever I'll be looking at a lap from Renz Brookman who has driven in default late afternoon weather to match the official series. I'll play the lap in full for you first before then going into further analysis. Okay, so that was a 1 minute 23.340. Okay, so starting off then on the VRS website, we've got the data packs selected, and we're going to scroll down to the Porsche iRacing Cup data pack as driven by Renz Brookman. We'll scroll down, scroll down to the final week, which is Laguna Seca. Click on that to load up the session details, where, of course, you can download the lap files with the ghost car, the replay, um, and the setup of course. I'm just going to click on learn track to load up the driving analyzer and it will start to play the lap through and to summarize what we can see if you're new to this uh, you've got a steering angle trace uh, speed trace through the duration of the lap of course brake and throttle input traces and some driving inputs as well. So we'll click on sector one which will be the run from the start of the lap to the braking zone for turn one. I'm also going to slow this down to half speed and mute it. So just hug the, the inside um, as you go across the start line and then allow the car back out wide before then coming back tight again towards the pit lane before finally... Um, so you're, you're taking a pretty straight path here but you're kind of clipping various apexes and before finally aiming towards the braking zone for turn one. So we'll go to sector two and uh, you're going to be braking at this white line just halfway along the curb on the right hand side before the four marker. So it's quite early. Uh, you, you tend to have to brake very early in this car. It doesn't have ABS so uh, getting the car stopped can be quite tricky. Um, so you can see here uh, Renz is braking quite gently the whole the whole braking zone really um, so as to avoid lock up keep the car over to the right hand side initially and then turn one and two are uh, well turn one is the kink that we've already passed actually um, turn two which is the one that we're just coming up to is a double apex left so uh, our first apex is going to be here where you've got this anti-cut curb which are featured throughout the circuit I'm just going to switch to chase camera just as Renz turns in uh, you can see that he's started bleeding off the brakes progressively and gradually um, as he's turning in which kind of matches his steering input exactly as well so you can see um, how he's exploiting the traction circle there to use the tires to their maximum um, and also he's not coasting at all so you want to keep the car loaded up at the front end especially this car so avoid coasting uh, which will just create understeer so this is our first apex and the car is going to run out wide away from the inside and then just as it starts to retighten again that's when Renz will pick up the throttle and you can see it's just starting to retighten so Renz can get back on the power hook up with this second apex get as close as you can to that red anti-cut curb 
um, but avoid it and uh, you can see here second gear so we are quite heavily traction limited pick up the throttle quickly initially to get the rotation so you're right on the uh, edge of traction as soon as possible and then modulate carefully to full throttle and of course use all of the track on the exit take advantage of that before then bringing the car back over to the left hand side to prepare for braking into turn three which is also sector three now again uh, we'll have a painted white line which is just halfway along the curb on the left before the two marker that's going to be the braking point now we are still traveling um, towards the outside of this corner so we're not at the edge of the circuit when Ren starts braking but you'll see he gets closer and closer under braking to the edge of the circuit and then as he starts to turn in which is just before the one marker um, he bleeds off the brakes more and more but again doesn't let go of the brakes entirely to avoid that nasty entry understeer so it's all about just avoiding the inside front locking up but still braking as much as you can get away with and uh, and you'll see here we've apex quite nicely Renz is aiming for this um, anti-cut curb as he's picked up the throttle so nice and early on the power but again picks it up quickly but then modulates his patient doesn't overcommit to full throttle too soon and that way he avoids unsettling the car too much um, on the exit you've got this flat flat curb to take advantage of so let the car run out wide and then uh, bring it ever so slightly back over to the right before then back over to the left you can really take advantage of these curbs to maximize the the angle of the corner so you take the widest possible path through each corner um, so just as we're uh, before the two marker here we're just getting back onto this entry curb uh, Renz is braking again so starts turning in just after he brakes which is why he's braking very gently initially and then bleeding off pretty much as soon as he started braking because he's turning in pretty much as soon as he starts to brake it's quite a, a fast corner and again aiming for that anti-cut curb but avoiding making contact with it and really committing hard on the throttle mid corner there to maximize the power and uh, maximize the acceleration sorry and also maximize the rotation through the apex and avoiding understeer so taking advantage of the curb on the exit there and at full throttle now down into turn five so braking is going to be just under this bridge we'll go to sector five for this and again we can see braking quite hard for this one and bleeding off quite early on so this corner is actually quite banked at the apex so you want to start turning in fairly early so that you don't run wide and you take advantage of that camber so again we can see that uh, as Renz is bleeding off the brakes it's correlating exactly with when he turns into the corner in terms of steering angle and as we play this through now so really kind of commits to turning in just before the one marker and of course braking on that curb you want to be listening out for the rumble strip sound hooking up for this apex again getting close to the anti-cut curb and then hard on the power where you've got lo lots of camber and then uh, being patient on the exit because the car gets a little bit light as you come out out of the camber and also uh, again take advantage of that exit curb to the maximum which is going to be the same story as well for turn six which is one of the most difficult corners on the circuit just passing underneath the bridge again uh, the three marker is going to be our braking point quite a, a gentle brake zone a fast corner bleeding off quite early on and in terms of car position once again just jinking gently to the right hand side to take advantage of the extra track provided by that curb and this is very much about timing the the apex is blind when you start to turn in and then it becomes visible just after so it's visible now but you can't really alter your line at this stage it's kind of difficult so you really want to make sure that you time it nicely when you initially turn in and again getting close to that anti-cut curb but not making contact with it and also that this corner is cambered once again at the apex so you can get really hard on the throttle and then just modulate and be patient so as to avoid running too wide and dropping wheels into the gravel but obviously you want to maximize 
the track everywhere. So take a nice straight line, um, run over the rumble strip on the left hand side before then breaking into the uh, breaking zone for what will be the corkscrew. So again we've got a white line marker here which is going to be our braking reference just before the top of the hill and you want to brake relatively early here and the reason is the car goes very very light as the circuit crests at the top of the hill and also you want to steer to the right as well so you want to really be quite gentle on the brakes to avoid locking up throughout this period and uh, so up onto that curb on the right hand side at the very top of the hill and then turning in just before the blue and white markings finish and again you can see that Renz is bleeding off the brakes at the same time spotting his apex now you can use a decent amount of curb here as we can see there and in terms of spotting the second apex of course it's completely blind at this point you want to be picking up the throttle at the first apex but yeah in terms of reference there's a tree which will appear with a crooked trunk and uh, pretty much below there will be the second apex so you can use that as your reference so there we go and uh, that's nicely hooked up into that second curb where uh, Renz is now modulating the throttle and the reason is he doesn't want to overcommit. he doesn't want to run too wide because he needs to bring the car back over to the right hand side to set himself up for turn 9 rainy curve now there isn't really much of a braking zone here but you want to brake nice and early and just feather the brakes just to get the car rotating and to avoid um, carrying too much speed and running wide at the apex so you can see that in the inputs here he's just covering the brake just feathering the brake setting the car up for the, the perfect line which is going to be again as close as possible to the red anti-cut curb picking up the throttle quite early there we'll go back to when he picks up the throttle so that's well before the apex and uh, I would say the reason for that is it's quite heavily cambered again so the car really loads up and uh, and also the, the circuit kind of starts to flatten out it was initially quite steep downhill it kind of levels out so you get quite a lot of compression and lots of grip but despite that uh, he's not actually reached full throttle um, just yet so you can see here he's finally committed to full throttle there and uh, again taking advantage of the full width of the track you don't need to, to run out onto this curb though because it's not really long enough to use properly it ends too soon um, and also you need to, to be conscious of the next right hander which you need to obviously bring the car back over to the left hand side to set up for so here um, braking again quite gently roughly in the middle of the circuit in between the two corners well before the curb at least and uh, braking quite gently because you kind of need to to start turning in quite early on because your trajectory at the moment is is sort of over here um, taking us to the outside of the circuit you can probably get a little bit wider on entry um, but the, the the problem with doing that is there is a nice bit of camber in the road um, which kind of disappears on this curb so off the curb then um, just trailing the brakes about five to ten percent just to keep the front end um, loaded up and keep the car rotating and again spotting the apex uh, as close as possible to the red anti-cut curb picking up the throttle as he apexes and then modulating carefully out and again the circuit goes the car goes quite light as the circuit levels out on the exit where Renz has again taken advantage of the flat curb final corner then bring the car back over to the right hand side um, quite early on because you want to brake in a straight line so that's going to be again this this white line just after the three marker or in between the three marker and the white line braking quite hard in a straight line turning in relatively late and bleeding off the brakes now Renz carries just a tiny bit too much speed into the apex and as a result um, is just a fraction off optimal um, but still pretty good gets good rotation picks up the throttle quite hard at the apex to be right on the limit of traction to help the car rotate and straightens up the steering as he commits to full throttle to try and avoid or anticipate oversteer and on the exit so you've got this astroturf try and try and avoid 
running out onto the AstroTurf. Uh, it's quite slippery and it will probably actually reduce the traction that you have for a good exit. You can find all setups, replays and telemetry for your own use and analysis on virtualracingschool.com where you can also book one-on-one -on -one tuition with world champions from the likes of Cool Anderson Sport. Good luck for this week and feel free to post any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching.